Okay. Well, hey everybody, it's 3 p.m. and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. So happy you're all here joining me today is one of the winners, one of the six of the summer barbecue tournament, Frank Solly, who's, uh, who's Solly or Solly? Solly. Solly, there we go. I knew that didn't sound right who is joining me today. And he actually joined me a couple months ago. Uh, Frank has written a cookbook and he loves cooking Italian. We did a little bit of a journey down his Italian background and how he became a cook and learned a lot about Frank. So if you're interested in that, go scroll down through our Nanny Bubby page and go ahead and look for that interview with Frank. So, hey Frank, happy to have you here. Thank you and it's a pleasure being here again. Good. So. What was it that you cooked during the summer barbecue tournament that caused us um, to put your name in the hat? What was it? What recipe did you win for? I made lemon flanks on, on a stick. And oh. then I think for this one, I think it was the, the pina colada that I covered. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So, so you won during the week of drinks, alcohol. I believe so. I posted the, the photo of the pina colada. Okay. All right. Well, Cynthia Berman says, hi, Marla. Hi, Frank. Brenda Kramer says, hi, Marla. Hi, Frank. And uh, everybody's starting to come in and starting to find us. So uh, Jeremy Leopold is here. So Jeremy, hi. Thank you for being here. So let me ask you a question. Yep, Brenda's saying hi. Everybody's here. So let me ask you a question. This chicken a la paisano, right? This is what you're making today. Chicken a la paisano. So what makes this a la Pisano? What, what exactly are the ingredients that are in this? Judy Woods is here. Everybody's finding us. Everybody's tuning in. Go ahead. It's chicken breast that's cut in half. And then we, we, we're going to pan sear it into, into a, a nice color, into like a darkish color. Uh -huh. And then we're going to simmer it in vodka sauce, top it with mozzarella and mushrooms. Okay. All right. And Don Winderman is here. So say hi to Don. Hey, Don. Um, everybody's here. Um, Lynn Donner is here, which is great. Okay. So start us out, Frank. What would you like? How would you like to start? Uh, well, I always start with my clean ingredients first. I never dirty the cotton board. Working with chicken, especially now with the coronavirus, you got to be very careful. So I always prepare my, my clean ingredients first, and then I do the chicken list. And then I just put the recipe together. Okay. What did you say about the coronavirus and chicken? I, I didn't hear you. What, what did you say? With the coronavirus and, and everything that's going on out there, and being that if you work with chicken and you can't cross-contaminate, you know, I don't want to create like a, I guess, a new, a new virus or... <laughs> well, you just don't want botulism or salmonella to take over, right? So you said you prepared and cleaned everything else first. And then you went back and prepared the chicken? Well, I didn't prepare anything yet. We're, we're okay. going to do that together. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so. Mark Goldberg said hello. Roseanne said hello. Um, and Lynn Donner is watching. So, okay, go ahead. Okay. So, to start, I like start, always start with my garlic because I'm a garlic freak. And uh -huh. I just love garlic. Can't get enough of it. Okay. We're going to thinly slice that. Okay. And seal oh. it. Here, hey, Celia. Yeah, it only takes a few seconds to really slice. You're going to use three cloves, three uh -huh. large cloves. Great. You can go less. You don't have to put three cloves in. Right. You, you can use a little bit more if you want. And you like to slice it instead of mince it. Correct. For this recipe, I like putting it into thin slices. Uh huh. Eight ounces of cremini mushrooms. Okay. Already pre-sliced, but that's how I buy it. Okay. All right. We're going to have a half a cup of chicken stock. Okay. One cup of vodka sauce. Today I'm using the already bought prepared sauce because I just, I'm having a problem with my kitchen. So. Okay. Um, I want to just say... Uh, just one thing, Don Winderman said his wife, Joanne, is Italian, so he loves watching when we're doing Italian dishes. And I, I would ask you, I know you're going to use a jarred vodka sauce, 
but I'm sure you know the technique for making vodka sauce. So would you yeah. mind just talking us through that as you go ahead to use the vodka sauce? Yeah, well, the vodka sauce, I usually start out with a, a regular tomato. Usually I try to get like a, a full whole tomato. So I crush it by hand mm -hmm. and I'll put vodka and cream in there. And it, it's simple to make. You can make a homemade uh, vodka sauce within 10, 15 minutes. Oh, really? That's great. Yeah, I, I make homemade. I put garlic in there, and I don't. Try, I try to make it as simple as possible. So I'll sauté the garlic in olive oil, put mm -hmm. the tomatoes in, almost like a marinara sauce to start it out with. Right. Then I'll put the vodka and the cream. And you, as you know, when you so put when the they cream, call it vodka sauce, they really are using real vodka in there for flavor. Yes. Yes, and I do. Use real the alcohol burns off, correct? Yes, it burns off after 15 minutes of simmering, and mm -hmm. you don't you don't really taste the alcohol, so you can give it to, to kids. It is kid friendly. And yeah, yeah. I would have much rather have using a, a a homemade vodka sauce, but but today this is going to have to do. It will do. It'll do just perfectly, Frank. Not to worry. But I just was wondering, you know, so it's so when you use tomatoes, do you use fresh tomatoes to make the sauce, or do you use canned tomatoes? What do you use? If the season calls for it, I like to use fresh tomatoes. Okay. You know, I'll parboil them, skin them, seed them, and then usually every year I do my tomato sauce in September, mm -hmm. and I do bushels and bushels of them. And I make it a very simple preparation where I could do it for different recipes and vodka sauce is one of them, so. So what you do is you actually, so everything sort of starts with a marinara, right? And then from there, you add the vodka and the cream or you add... Um... Correct. Now, when you say marinara, there's a lot of different variations of marinara. Some put oregano, some don't, some put an onion, some don't. I don't put none of that. For my regular sauce, I just put the tomato, a couple of fresh leaves of basil, and that's it, and salt. And then and from then there, you turn it in. So you must, you freeze that. No, I don't freeze it. You don't freeze I, jars of it? No. What I do is I put it inside uh, bowl jars, okay. boil, the, boil the, the jars, mm -hmm. and then once they, they, you have to put them underneath blankets for like two or three days, and then check to make sure that it, that you have a, a good seal. Right. Once that's done, you can keep that sauce for three, four years, and, and it's delicious. On the shelf, it's shelf stable. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Say hi to Heather Larico. She's here. And, hi, Heather. Well, we got a lot of Italians coming in today, so Frank, Solly, take it away. Yeah. Okay. So we already sliced up the garlic. The mushrooms are, are pre-sliced. Uh -huh. A half a cup of stock. One cup of vodka sauce. And for this recipe, I like using the deli sliced mozzarella that comes in the package and the low moisture, if I can. Okay. It, it just makes a much cleaner preparation for, for, the, uh, for the, the final dish. Okay. And it, it's visually appealing, so. Okay, let's go. Say hi to Heather. She's here. She says hi, Frank. Hi, okay, all right. So you sliced up the garlic. Yeah, slice up the garlic really thin. Make sure you don't have like no real big chunks in it. Nobody likes biting on a, a big chunk of garlic. That's what I always say. Yeah. Then we take regular olive oil, not extra virgin. You're going to take two tablespoons into a pan. Let that come up to temperature with the garlic. Usually I put the oil and the garlic into a cold pan. I never heat the pan up and get it hot and then put the oil in the garlic. If I had done that, the garlic would instantly burn. Right. So, so we don't do that. So once this becomes golden brown, we can add the mushrooms and sear the chicken. So for the chicken, we're gonna clean it, take off all the rough edges, Stuff like this, this stuff I don't like. It's not presentable. And we're gonna cut that in half lengthwise. So we have a question from Don Winderman. He said, can you roast the garlic first and then add the already roasted garlic? What are your thoughts about that? 
I've never done that, but I'm sure you can. I mean, I, I don't see why not. Yeah, just make sure that you don't over burn it in the hot pan because nobody right, likes right. a big bite of roasted garlic. And Teresa Anderson is here. So say hi to Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Yeah, now I came up with this recipe in my younger days. And usually, this was always for years. It's always been my go-to on date night because oh. women, for some reason, I've never met a woman that didn't like penny a la vodka. All right. So you take this and put it over a bed of penne. Is that right? Yes. Sometimes I'll put it over rice or polenta and I'll, I'll cook it different ways. It depends. So to start, we're going to season the chicken with salt and pepper. Let me just lower the heat a little bit on that because that's starting to get a little hot. Season both sides with salt and pepper. What you want to do is before you season the chicken with salt and pepper, you're going to wash it on the cold water and then pat it dry with paper towel. This has to be dry. Okay. All right. Yes. And so I noticed that you cut, you know, you sliced it in half lengthwise to, and you prefer to do that rather than pounding it? Correct. The reason why I don't like to pound this is because it's going into a tomato, into the sauce, and it's going to be simmering for a few minutes. Uh huh. Now, this is starting to get a little hot. Okay. So, now it's time to add the chicken. Uh -huh. When I add the chicken into the pan, I always go with the thickest one first. Oh. Okay. And that is because it starts to cook first. So they all get cooked evenly yes because the chicken is different thicknesses if i would have put this thin one in first it would actually be overcooked by the time it comes out right okay good so, good hint. that's a great pro tip frank yes so what we're going to do is we're going to sear that until it gets a nice color on it we're not going to cook it all the way through you're not going to what i i missed that what'd you say dear we're not going to cook it all the way through Oh, you're not, okay. No, we're just trying to get some color on it. I want a nice deep golden brown color, but as you know, color is flavor. Color is flavor. Yota Motolonghi says that's where everything is enriched. All those flavors are in the, the bottom of the pan, right? All the uh, brownings at the bottom of a, plant, of a pan and on the, the uh, top of the skin, right? Yes. Okay, so once that gets brown, we're going to take that out. Now you could do this two ways. You could sear the chicken first and then add the garlic and then the rest of the ingredients. Or you could add the garlic first like I just did and then sear the chicken. It works both ways. Okay. There's really no wrong way to do this. Now, did you take the garlic out or is it still in there? It's still in there. Okay. Once the chicken goes in, the moisture releases from the chicken, it stops the ball from, from cooking. What do I you end up with burnt garlic? Okay. What you want is a nice brown color. And now we're going to remove this. What we want is color on it. That's what we're doing at this point. Can you and and did you only get the color on one side of it or on both oh, sides? Both sides. Okay. You, you, never want, you never want one sided chicken. Right. Okay. Can you like hold up the chicken so we can see the browning of it? Yes. Let me just remove this from the heat. There you go. Okay. Very good. So really not deep, deep brown, but just a light golden color. Yeah. The deeper, the deeper brown that you go, the more flavored is obviously going to be. Okay. So. Today, because I put the gall in first, I don't want to get it too, too dark because right. of the gall. Right. Okay. So gotcha. Once, once that's all around, now we're going to go in with the mushrooms. Straight into the pan with that. We're going to saute these mushrooms until they release all their liquid and they start to brown. And that should take about five minutes. 
We're going to season that with salt and pepper. At this point, you don't want to season too much, but every single step of the way, we're going to season. Oh, great. I'm going to the layers of flavor. That's a great idea, Frank. I like that technique. That's a really good idea. Every time you add something new, season for it. Yes. And if the pan gets a little too dry, just add a little bit more oil. Now, I know you said you just use regular olive oil, not extra virgin. Is there a reason why you didn't use extra virgin? Is there something to that? Yes. If I would have used the extra virgin, it would have gave off a, with the garlic, it, especially for the cooking time, it would have gave off a very bitter taste. Oh. And that's not that's not what we're going for. Okay. So the amount of time that it's in there, I like to look at it as extra virgin. I always try to use it as a finishing oil. Okay. And olive oil, most of my dishes, I'll start out with the olive oil. Gotcha. Rather okay. than extra virgin. I know people online, a lot of recipes tell you to do extra virgin and then but and I know I our friend, uh, Tom Curry from Temecula Olive Oil Company, when I interviewed him, he said, extra virgin olive oil, poo poo, he said. There's, you know, he said, what makes it that way? He said, they're all extra virgin. So. It depends on how many times it's been processed, how many times it's been pressed. So that's the only difference between oil. Now, do you like Italian olive oil? Do you like California olive oil? What's your favorite olive oil? It depends. Uh, right now, I've been hooked on California olive oil. And they why? Do. I actually have been too. Why, why are you? Oh, Ryan McNamara Allen is here. Hey, Ryan Allen. Thanks for being here. I love it when you show up. Go ahead. The reason why I got hooked on it was I always think when you're looking for an olive oil to do a taste test, you can't judge olive oil no matter what type of oil it is unless you taste it. And what you're looking for is a nice olive taste. When you put that olive oil in your mouth, you should be thinking of olives. And when I eat the uh, California olive oil, that's the first thing I think of is olives. And yeah. It's just a delicious oil. And what makes an olive oil? Remember when I made the Bernays sauce the other day? It was so bitter. Like I could just taste the bitterness of that olive oil. I just really, it just was such a mistake. And so what is it that gives that? Or do you know what that um, bitterness taste is in, in that olive oil? It's the oils and the way they process it. Mm -hmm. If it, it's stone ground, you, you know, the purer the olive oil, the better the taste, obviously. Right. So that's right. what gives off that bit of taste. It almost tasted, you know how when you drink red wine, you get, I can't think of what that is in red wine that makes it bitter. The, um, do you know the word I'm looking for? Acid. Here? No, I not the acid. acid. What is it? I believe it's the acid. No, it's the, um, I don't know, Teresa, help me out here. Teresa's good at stuff like this. That the sediment that is in it, it's called something. Anyway, Teresa or Roseanne will come up with it. Hey, Brenda Mills. And Don Winderman said he totally, is, uh, totally agrees. California olive oil is his family's favorite as well. Um, yeah. Thinking of, I, what am I thinking I, of? I tasted the olive oil and it instantly reminded me of olives. And I've been stuck on it. I mean, I just can't get enough. And is it the name called um, uh, Cal uh, the California bot the bottle that says California on it? Yes. Yeah, I love that one too. Matt yes. Shaker is here. Hey, Matt, thanks for being here. Okay, so so okay. once your yes. mushrooms have released all their liquid, as you can see here, and they got a nice brown color to it. I don't know if you can yes. see that. Yes. No, you can down down the bottom. That's great. Okay, so once they release all their liquid, they got that nice brown. Tannins. Don Winderman to the rescue. Don came up with the word tannins. The, the tannins, tannins, that's tannins it. In, in red wine and that uh, olive oil had such a really heavy, bitter tannin. And Brenda came up with it and Teresa came up with it. All right, everybody to the rescue. All right. Uh, we're going to deglaze the pan with a half a cup of chicken stock. Okay. And we're going to bring that to a simmer. Okay. You want to, you want to scrape the bottom of the pan to get the 
on the bottom, it's what's called fine. And that's where all the flavor leads. What is it? Is it called? On the bottom is called, what did you call it? Frank, what did you fond. say? Fond, F-O-N-D. Oh, okay. Yes. And when you add the liquid to the pan, what happens is it brings the temperature down and it releases all the ground bits. And that's where all your flavor comes from. Yes, it does. No matter, no matter what dish you're making, it's always the same process. I know. I love to deglaze a, a pan. It is just my favorite thing to do. I have no idea why, but I just love it. Yeah. It, it, that's where most of the flavor comes from. Yeah. So once, once that deglazes, once it comes up to the simmer, we're going to go in with one cup of vodka sauce. Okay. One you cup can, or so, right? <laughs> you, you, can, you can measure it if you want. But, but no. I've been doing... I've been doing it so for some the rest. mushrooms in there as you added the vodka sauce. Yes, the mushrooms and the garlic is still in there. The stock is still in there. And we just add in the vodka sauce at this point. We're going to mix everything together. Mm -hmm. So if you were making a vodka sauce, let's say, for this recipe, um, Frank, would you actually like add your tomatoes? Would you pre-make the vodka sauce or would you actually sort of assemble the vodka sauce in that pan right now as you're going? Usually for most of my recipes, I like what's, it's, it's a French word, it's called mise en place. And basically what that means is everything prepared and everything here and everything ready. And that includes the vodka sauce. So, but what I'm asking is, do you actually, if you're making the vodka sauce, would you make it in the pan right now as you're going, or would you pre-make the vodka sauce? No, I would pre-make. Okay. I would make it all right. the time. Don asked, and I have an answer to this, and I'll give Don my answer, but let me ask you your answer. He said, do you have a favorite brand of jarred sauce? Yes. This one is Batoli. And I love Batali for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, because of the flavor. It doesn't give off an italic flavor like a lot of these other companies do. You, you just put it and it tastes like italic. And I don't like that. Okay. But and that's P-E-R-T-O-L-I? Yes. Yeah. It, and you get that at Trader Joe's, I think, don't you? Yeah. And the second one is Rayo's. But Rayo's can get very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So Rayo's, that, oh, I'm sorry. I just want to add, Rayo's is actually my uh, my very favorite uh, brand as well. It's a, it's a really good brand. That that's my second. You know, if, if I really want to impress a woman, go for <laughs> Rayo's. If not, go buy. What if you just want to invest? You know, impress a, a couple of good friends. You use Bertoli. <laughs> I use Bertoli because. I, I personally, if I have to go with a jarred sauce, uh -huh. that's just the flavor that I like. And it, it works very well with this recipe. Okay, Susie so, Forman is here. Hey, Susie. She's just joined. Got a lot of people coming in today. Once the, the vodka sauce comes up to a simmer, you're going to return the chicken. Uh-huh. I mean, all the, all the juice, that's flavor right there. Let me throw that out. Yep. So Roseanne yeah. said she likes Bertoli over Rayo's, uh, and even if she has to impress a woman, she's going to use Bertoli's. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to add a little bit more stock. I made it funny. I don't know if anybody caught that or not, but I made it funny. Roseanne <laughs> probably caught it. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you caught my funny. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I just added a little bit more stock. At this point, I like to simmer the chicken first, but because I added the stock, I brought the temperature down, so I'm covering just to get the temperature back up. Gotcha. Once, once the chicken, once the once the vodka sauce comes up to a simmer, we're going to simmer that until the chicken is fully cooked through. That okay. should take about five to seven minutes. Okay. Now, normally, what, what I like to do is I like to take an internal temperature of 160 on the chicken. That's what when I'll, I'll remove it. So. Okay, so even in, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of thumbs up, thanks guys. Um, uh, so, so I, when I'm doing chicken 
you know, pieces with bones in it, or when I'm doing a whole roast chicken or a quarter chicken, I, I will take the temperature of the chicken, but you're saying you take the temperature of just even a thinly sliced chicken breast. Yes. So how do you do that, Frank? Because my experience is, is that if something is very thin and you put the thermometer in, it's almost like measuring it, it you know, the needle goes all the way through it. And I, I feel like it's not the real temperature. How do you do it? Okay. I use two different gauges. The first gauge I use is a digital gauge. That's how I'll, I always measure my oil. You see how hot the oil is. And even the sauce, put a digital thermometer on it and that'll tell you how hot the sauce is and, and whatnot. As far as the chicken, if it's really thin, like a quarter inch, there's no way. It's impossible to get internal temperature. Right. But because this chicken, I only cut it in the, the breast in half lengthwise. This is a good three quarter inch thick. And so just, you get it, can you get an inter? Oh, you're going to go right through the middle of it. You're going to go correct. this way as opposed to this way. Right. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Arlene is here. Arlene, Blue, where have you been? Nice to see you back. Okay. So you want to get the chicken to about 160 to 165. Okay. Usually, I go to 155 on this recipe because I have to add the, the cheese and then I cover it until the cheese melts and that'll bring up the temperature to 160, 165. Okay. Yeah. And this recipe, I've been making this recipe for years. I mean, when I was in uh, high school, after after my high school days, I'd sit down and think of what recipes can I make, what recipes I can. I had a date I had scheduled, and back then, you know, things were rough. I had no money. I only had what I had in the house, and that was it. And I went out, I got some chicken breast. I had the vodka sauce already. I had the mushrooms, and I, I was thinking I was going to make chicken parmesan. And... I just didn't have the money for the eggs, the bread crumb, and I was basically starving. So I put this together with the vodka sauce. I threw the mushrooms in, and it's been a hit ever since. And it's so a really good there are no real recipe actually called chicken a la paisano. You just came up with that name and made this recipe yourself? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought this was maybe just a common Italian dish, but this is oh, no. la, this is really chicken a la Frank, right? Yes. Now I do this. No, with you. no, 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 no. I'm thinking, why didn't you name it Chicken Ala Franco? I have other recipes that that well, not Chicken Ala Franco, but the reason why I did I named the Chicken Ala Paisano was because the very first time that I ever made it, I had a whole bunch of friends over. Oh, okay. It, it was just great, and everybody was sitting all random. And one of my friends he turned around and he tells me, you know. This would really impress a girl. And I've been calling it chicken a la paisano ever since. Because it came from your friends. Okay, and Roseanne is asking, because I know I did ask the question about pounding it for this recipe, but she wants to know for chicken parmesan, do you slice the chicken or do you pound the chicken? For chicken parmesan, I cut it the same way and then I'll pound it down to a quarter inch. Okay. Now, and that, that it depends on the recipe. Sometimes if I'm gonna layer the chicken palm like in a bacon dish, like on top of each other, I don't pound it. it. It would be too much. But if I'm serving like restaurant style, right. too much what? Why wouldn't you pound it if you were if you were layering it? Like too much what? Why would it be too much? It would be, it would be too much bread and inside the sauce, and it would just get soaked up with, with the, the amount of sauce. You would have to add extra sauce, and at the end, you'd probably have a mess. Bye, Lynn. Thank you for being here. Okay. Lynn so for chicken parmesan, it would depend. If I'm layering it, I do not pound it because of that reason. All right. If I'm, if I'm layering it, obviously it will go in a bacon dish. And my mother used to do this when I was a child. She'd cut the chicken breast in half like I just did. And then she'd put the cheese on top and the sauce and she'd go into a bacon dish and everything would just be laid right on top of each other. And it would just get higher and higher until it reached the top of the bacon dish and then it would go in for 40 minutes. It was good. Now I do that and I also do it restaurant style where it's just one chicken breast 
in, in a pan and that I pound thin. That you don't, you don't layer it. You just do it thin, it goes in the oven. Okay. Yeah. So this should take about five to seven minutes to fully cook through. You're gonna turn okay, it. How are, how are you coming on? I know you lost almost 5,000 recipes due to a due to a bad relationship and a retaliatory woman. <laughs> you love yourself some women and you get yourself into some trouble there, don't you? Um, yeah, yeah, oh boy, yeah. Oh boy, but how are you doing at recovering all those recipes? Oh, uh, last seven years, I, I can't say I recovered them all. Uh, I recovered, obviously, the old school ones from my mother and, you know, my grandmother, she's not with us anymore, mm -hmm. but I had to sit down with my mother and go over every single recipe, every single ingredient, the amounts, and then within the last 10, seven years, I had to retry them all, make sure they, they were all right, and yeah, it was a real hassle, so... But yeah, to recover all 5,000, I don't think I, I mean, I'm still working on it. What, how many do you have accumulated right now? 5,000. Oh, okay. So yeah, maybe, maybe maybe a little less. same ones, but at least you've got 5,000 recipes. That's great. It's, I, don't, I can't say that it's the exact same recipes, but I remember the ones that I wrote and I remember the ingredients that were in it. I jotted it down on a piece of paper, one after another, like two or three years and then last couple of years i've been trying to put them all together back together and so are you saving them now on a thumb drive or up in a cloud somewhere so that you don't have that well, same situation what are you doing with that, with that being said i learned my lesson okay good boy <laughs> now i learned how to back it up i back it up on several different usb drives okay <laughs> I back it up on on, on discs Okay. So, and I keep them in, you know, several places. So, in case I lose one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I learned my lesson on that. Yeah. Don't keep them in any women's house, Frank. It was, we, uh, what happened was we were engaged to be married. Yeah. And I signed the lease. It was for a house. It was leased with the option to buy. Mm -hmm. At that time, I had paid into a nice lump sum of money. And I put the down payment on the house. I put the rest of the, the money in escrow for, for repairs and whatnot. And we, uh, uh, you know, I, I really don't want to get into it, but things happened. And she up, left, just didn't, didn't, didn't pay the mortgage, didn't, you know, because I, I was giving her the money to, to pay the mortgage and we were splitting everything 50 50. I was unaware she wasn't paying. Until until I got home one day, her and the baby were gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm standing out there. Now, I had the money because back then I was playing poker. So I had money in my pocket. So I had to live off of that. And yeah, I ended up losing everything. Oh, yeah. well. It, it's all right. It's life's, all right a journey. life's a journey we just you know you do the best you can to get through it right everybody's yeah. had their thing for sure but it's you're still standing frank and you're still cooking and you're still writing recipes so yeah you know there you go. in order to, to realize where you are sometimes you have to get knocked down in order to get to the next step and that's how i've been looking at it yeah listen look at it however you have to look at it to get yourself up and get yourself moving forward, right? Yeah, I've been working very hard the last seven, couple of seven years. And I can't say I'm, I'm totally back to where I am. You know, like I, I told you earlier, I, I just bought a new house. So yeah, yeah, as soon right. as the- Is it here in Vegas? Yes, it's here in Vegas and Good. it's- going to be, everything's getting demolished. Everything's going to be rebuilt. I'm putting a brand new studio kitchen in there, a full recording studio, and hopefully, hopefully. Well, Judy, uh, Judy Wood says, keep on cooking. Lindsay is here and says hello, and Teresa Anderson is waving. So, okay, so how are we coming? And Roseanne, oh, Roseanne said, congratulations, Frank, on the new house. That's great. That's a good Thank word. Congratulations. Much. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah.
Yeah, so so right now I don't have because all my stuff is in storage. Until the house is built, right now everything is in storage. So I don't have my uh my thermometer. So what I'm doing is this normally I've made it so many times. I know once it goes into that sauce, 20 minutes exactly, that'll be perfectly cooked. And then I'll I'll do the field test to make sure that it's the right density. Okay. So, all right. Once it's fully cooked, what we're going to do is we're going to cover each piece of chicken with cheese, uh -huh. put the cover over it, and let it melt. Okay. And Don Winderman says congratulations as well. So right. how do you think we're coming on if it's, is it close to the 20 minutes yet or? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe another, five, maybe another five more minutes. Okay. So let's keep chatting then. Did you did you make penne? Like, would you normally be serving this over penne? I would normally serve this. It depends on how much sauce I make. Sometimes I make this recipe in batches, and then, but for this, because there's four breasts, I consider one total large breast for two persons. So here we have two breasts. That's four people. One pound of pasta, and normally I would pre-cook the pasta while this is cooking. You know, my water would have been coming up to a boil. And then once that chicken goes in, the pasta goes in. And then it would have been done, it would have been done at the same time. But right now I had I had a setback. I was supposed to have a kitchen for, for today, but I had had to make do it with the area that I had. So otherwise, and even though I'm in my own home kitchen, I have to make do every day with the space that I have, because if I cooked back there on the stove that actually is in this kitchen, then all you would see every day is my back. Right. So yeah. I, my sister's burner, very similar to the burner that you have. And yes, I'm in my kitchen, but my stove is not facing in this direction. I just happen to have to set up my sister's burner and I just work from here. I still call it my sister's burner, but I mean, she hasn't had that that burner in three years. <laughs> she, I've yeah. Had that burner. <laughs> yeah, after after our last recording, I didn't really expect to come back on to, to do any recordings until the studio was built. Uh -huh. So that's why that's why I'm I'm having a, a kitchenless issue. That's okay. she, and Teresa says your New York accent makes everything taste better. For the happy. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, and right. so Foreman asked me how my refrigerator was. I just want to show everybody. Can I show everybody my refrigerator? I started putting everything back yes. in today. Yes. I'm not quite well, there. But while we're waiting, I guess I can open this so everybody can see. So things are starting to get back in little by little on my freezer. Let's see, will that open far enough? My freezer still doesn't have anything in it, but it's not leaking and there's no ice buildup. So we're in good shape there. But yeah, my refrigerator, I'm starting to get, get things. Oh, and I just wanted to share with everybody, like I know I did this yesterday, but this is the zucchini that came onto the garden yesterday, which I am actually was gonna make today. So thanks for asking, Susie. Okay. Yeah, so what I, what I did was, I already put the cheese on each piece of chicken, I put the cover on. Once that cheese melts, that takes about two to three minutes. Once that's melted, we're done. Then it's time to plate and serve. And this is very impressive. This is a very impressive dish. Yes, very. So Lisa Dell finally found us. She was really busy today, but she's here now. And um, she can always go back and, and watch the begin, beginning of this. She loves your recipes, Frank. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, there it comes. Yum. See, now that's what I call cheesy. Oh, Don says his wife just saw a recipe to make zucchini butter. So um, I, I actually wanted to show that too. That's the only thing in my freezer right now is the compound butter or the maitre d' butter that we made on Monday when I didn't have anything but soft butter that I didn't throw away. And so here's the compound butter that turned out very well, I think, don't you? Yeah, I'm gonna have to try that recipe because that looks yeah. really good. And so on, on your steaks, veals, chops, roasts, 
Um, even, you know, uh, inside uh, between the skin and the meat of your chicken, a little bit of the compound butter um, is absolutely great. So, hey, Don, you should have, I don't know, Don, if you and your wife belong to Gather with Danny Budby, it's our Facebook group. If you don't belong, you should definitely belong. And then you would be able to post the recipe for everybody that's here today inside Gather with Danny Bubby. And we'd all be able to talk to you and look at that recipe and enjoy it. So um, just even some suggestions there. Okay. All right. So, so once the, the chicken comes out and you start to plate it, you finish it off with a chiffonade of basil right here. I've been having a problem with the basil. Yes. Yeah. The last couple um, of days, I can't find any decent basil out there. Yeah, you know, Vegas goes through kind of a, a high and low this time of year. And then in the, the dead of winter, of course, I, I don't know where they get the basil, but there's just, there's periods in the summer. And it's crazy because basil is a summer herb that it just, it's just not here. Maybe it just gets too hot, but my basil grows really well. Like if, if I knew you needed basil, I would have given you basil because I've got plenty. Um, let's see, Dawn said um, zucchini butter is more like slow cooked shredded zucchini to serve as a spread. Interesting. Um, and did, did you try Trader Joe's? Lisa said that Trader Joe's usually has good basil. Did you try it? No, being, being that I'm over the road truck driver, I actually just came in last night. So oh. I'm going to be able to have a few hours this morning to go run around from supermarket to supermarket. And I, I went to four or five places, not, none of them had it. I yeah. went to we found one place and you saw what that basil looked like. This yeah, morning. it was bad. He showed it to me, it was already brown. Um, all the fires are hurting the produce, she said. Brenda Mills said that the fires right now in California are hurting the produce, especially in the Central Valley, I'm guessing, right, Brenda? And Roseanne said she doesn't have any basil left because the worms ate it. That's interesting. I have caterpillars that were eating my tomatoes, but my gardener has a really good eye, and so he cut them all out for me today. I can't deal with worms. I can't deal with those big green caterpillars or the rats. I There's freak a, out. Yeah, so let me try to give you a close up of this. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Turn it around just a little bit so we can see the melted cheese. So what you did, uh, we'll know just a little bit so that turn, keep turning, turn again, turn again. Okay, now there you go. So you've got the mushrooms in the back and you've got the chicken breast with the cheese melted on top. That looks beautiful. Yes. Now, normally I would serve this over a side of pasta mm -hmm. because believe it or not, that one cup of sauce that I put in there and a half a cup of stock, that makes enough of sauce for one pound of pasta. Right? You don't want to drown the pasta in the sauce. Right, right. So, Might you toss the, the, oh, so Brenda Mills says looks, she said it looks tummy, but I think she means it looks yummy. Yes. <laughs> Autocorrect. Um, oh my gosh, so beautiful. Frank said, Lisa, Judy Wood said looks beautiful and yummy. Don Winderman says that looks great. Susan Foreman says it looks delicious. And um, it looks delicious to me too. But if you, Brenda Mills, yes, is laughing. Okay, so if you toss the pasta, and you don't want to put, drown it in sauce, might you use a little bit of, you know, a light a little bit of olive oil and toss that with a little bit of salt and pepper and then put the pasta over the top of that? Yeah, what I normally do is I remove the chicken and I remove the, the mushrooms for the presentation that I want. Uh -huh. And then the pasta, the drained pasta will go in the remaining sauce. There you go. But before, before I toss the, the pasta in there, I'll toss the pasta with a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin, no salt and no pepper because the salted water from the pasta would yes. have been enough as well. That's correct. And do you ever use the pasta water to thin out like a sauce or add a little bit of the pasta water into your sauce to thin it out? Never to thin it. Pasta water, I only use to thicken the sauce. Believe it or oh, not, it thickens. Thicken it? Yes. Because you're using the, the starch. Correct. It actually acts as, as a thickening agent rather than a thinner. I mean, if you put enough in it, it would still thin it. Right. Just adds a little moisture and then it thickens. Right. 
Like if you didn't have enough of that sauce in there right now and you wanted to add a little more, would you add a little bit of pasta water and then sort of cook yes. it down and thicken, but you'd have more sauce? Yes, you could You could use the pasta water or more chicken stock. Okay. I would prefer, rather, I would prefer to use more pasta water. Make it, if I didn't have enough of sauce, I would use the pasta water, but I would use a lot of it. I'd make the sauce very thin and then I'd cook it down into, into my desired things. And Amazing, Frank. Well, yes. this was a great summer barbecue tournament winner for everybody, right? We all learned from each other. And I'm sorry you didn't win the big one. That was, you know, left up to Lene, who won the big pull on that one. Um, but, uh, but, you know, you can't win them all, although Lene does win them all. But I don't know. She said, Marla, I've never won anything in my life, but she's certainly been a winner with Nanny Bubby. But uh, anyway, we're happy that you won one of the weeks and we're always happy to have you here, Frank. You should come back um, again and again and show us more of your recipes and we all think the world of you. Um, Brenda Mills said, thank you. Roseanne said, wow, yum. Didn't... Don Winderman did say that he always uses pasta water to thin the sauce. And I think probably when you first put it in, it does liquefy it so right but if it simmered a bit it would actually thicken it correct yes. which yes. is good news because sometimes if you add too much pasta water you actually do want to thicken it and if you'll just let it cook a while it will thicken correct yeah yeah it depends like like i said if i didn't have enough of sauce and i wanted to stretch the sauce yes. i would put a i would put maybe a whole cup of a pasta water in it that's now, right you want if you want to thicken the sauce, put a little pasta water and the starch, especially because of the pasta. Once you start flipping it and you start tossing it, it's going to thicken. It's not going to thin. So, yeah. Good. Okay. Everybody's giving hands and applause. How about a few thumbs up? Judy Wood says, thanks, Frank and Marla. She's got a great bottle of wine there. Roseanne said, I'm making chicken parmesan for dinner tonight. Just finished slicing and pounding. Thanks, Frank. That's awesome. Yes. So if you were to drink, what's your favorite wine accompaniment that you would have with this tonight, Frank? With this, because it's chicken, I have a rule of thumb when it comes to wine pairing. If it's a light piece of meat, I always go with a white one. Okay. And for this type of dish, I like to keep it in the in the Italian region of Piedmont North. Uh huh. Okay. Piedmont region. Good. So it depends. All right. Lisa says Chianti, and she gives you a thumbs up and 100%. Great job. Mia Camargo, uh, Camargo is here. So there we go. And Don. <clears throat> Excuse me, Don Winderman says, have a wonderful evening. Blessings to all and to everybody. So everybody on the count of three all together, Frank. One, two, three. Go spread out and love. spread love like butter. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Frank. Bye. Thank you for being here, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Frank. <laughs>